everybody and welcome back to my blog Little Stitches. I'm Amy and this is coming to you from Warwick in England um, where I live. Uh, this is my first blog of 2017 so Happy New Year to everyone and I'd like to just say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far, um, to everyone who's liked videos, who's put uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. It's so much fun um, reading the comments and answering and I just can't believe that so many people are wanting to subscribe um, having watched some of the videos, so that's really good. Um, so today I'm going to show you what I made in December, which isn't that much sewing wise, um, uh, but what I did make has turned into a giant ugly catastrophe um, and then the other two projects I did are yarn based so I'll start off with them because they're the good. Um, so first up is this cushion. So I started making this uh, 18 months to two years ago um, and it was just so slow at growing that I just put it away and never got around to finishing it but it's been it and basically I find it difficult to start new projects when I've got something on the go I'm the type of person that likes to start and finish something um so I've not done much crochet in between because I always had this in the back of my mind that I had to get completed first um, and in December I finally decided that I wanted it done out of the way this year or last year and um, so that in January I could start new things. Oh we've got a visitor now. Um, so it's, I didn't use a pattern on it or anything, it is um, a deep purple chenille which I don't know how easily it's going to show up on the screen uh, especially today because it's a really dark day um, but I've done it in a basket weave stitch so it's got a nice texture to it and all I did was basically um, chain the width of the cushion I wanted to cover and then I just made a big long piece of basket weave and then I just folded it over basically and overlapped it a little bit and then put toggles on to close it and just like a little buttonhole style thing and then just closed it again down the sides. Um, and yeah it took absolutely ages, I literally was crocheting non-stop to the point of my hands were killing me. Um, it's the yarn is quite thin so I had to use a four millimeter hook and it just took ages. So each um, three rows is sort of one part of the basket weave pattern um, and that takes about an hour. So you can see how many hours <laughs> have gone into it. So although I love it, I certainly won't be making another one because it's just not worth the time and next time I do any basket weave I'll definitely use a chunky yarn because or, and in fact next time I do a cushion I'll do a chunky yarn because it's just it takes so long it's yeah and crochet is a lot faster than knitting as well and this still took me absolutely ages so that's that done so now I can get on with other crochet projects the other thing I made was I used a knitting loom to make this hat and I love the colour combinations of this I just I love coral colours anyway and it just looks really lovely with this sort of bluey grey um, yarn the the bluey grey yarn is where have I put that um, it is Stylecraft Nordic super chunky and it's called Glacier and it's 80% um, acrylic and 20% wool so it's nice and cosy um, and then the pom pom is Olympus double knitting and it doesn't have a name for the colour but it's essentially a bright coral um, and it's 100% acrylic so and they were both I think well the the blue is definitely from Abacans I think they probably both were but um, yeah so I used the 
green knitting loom, which does look like it's going to be absolutely massive, but obviously when you use it, you're stretching the yarn, so when it comes off, it's much smaller. And these are basically like um, a knitting dolly, if you have had one, one of those when you're young, where you just made a big, long tube for, I don't know, what anyone ever did with them, I just made long worms, um, and I bought, they come in a set like this, and I bought a set for my niece for Christmas, and she absolutely loved it and made a hat on Christmas Day, so I'd taken mine up to um, Stockport where we spent Christmas to show her how to use it, so yeah, so these are pretty cheap, I got, again I got this from Abacan a long long time ago, probably 10 or 11 years ago I bought this, um, but the one I got for my niece I just got on eBay and I think it was, they're not that expensive, they're sort of 8 to £10 pounds for the whole set so it's pretty good. Um, they come with a small instruction booklet but there's not a, like tons of instruction, I mean it is pretty easy, um, but I used a tutorial on YouTube and I'll link to it down below um, and because they, they have lots of tutorials and it was really useful and really good so yeah I might make another one for my husband without the bump bump um, but it does need knitting looms tend to need chunky wools or yarns because um, the, the width of the pegs is quite far apart so if it's not chunky then you get quite a gappy you can see through all the gaps basically but yeah I really like this one so I might make a cowl or something um, to go with it but I'm not sure I've only got that amount left of this so probably isn't enough to make a cowl out of that but I'll have a think I'll think so yeah and then lastly we'll go on to the giant disaster, which is the bad and the ugly. So I've never made a coat before, now I have, and it, it's not something I'm going to be wearing. Um, so, the actual making of the coat wasn't a problem, it's just that the finished article looks absolutely hideous, frankly. So. The pattern is from Birder Style, uh, November last year, 2016, and it is this one, and it all is just called Short Coat 121. So they don't really name their patterns jazzy names or anything. Um, and I mean, it does say it's oversized shape. Um, yeah, and it's just far too oversized for me basically. I'm quite short um, and it just, that sort of style just really does not look good on me, unfortunately. And I did do a toile uh, in case you're thinking why didn't you do a practice first and I did but I mean I didn't put a whole lot of effort into the toile because I was sort of adamant that I would make that coat. Um, so I made it the twirl was out of some cut and I just had a moustache and it had a, a pretty um, full on print so it was quite difficult to actually see what was going on um, so I just thought well it fits, it doesn't look too ridiculous and this is a ridiculous fabric so I'll just go ahead um, and the fabric wasn't it didn't break the bank, so I bought three meters of this from the rag market in Birmingham. It's um, it was twenty five pound for the three meters, and it's just a pale grey herringbone, fifty percent wool, fifty percent polyester. Um, and then because it's it's not actually a really thick weight of coat fabric, I interlined it with um, just some really soft flannel extra warmth and that was from Barry's Fabrics in Birmingham and that was 3 dollars it's just a cream colour, it doesn't really matter what colour and then I was adamant that I was going to line it with a blanket as well because I wanted it so snuggly, I get really cold all the time so I wanted a really soft snuggly lining to it so I got this blanket and that, that was from the range 
and that for I think it's a it was a double size and that was seven ninety nine. So the whole thing it hasn't cost loads. Um, so the issue I mean it is literally just the style of the coat just does not suit me. The actually sewing it up wasn't too bad. Um, the instruction Birda style instructions are famous for being pretty difficult to understand and they were um i mean i could keep up with it but i had to if you're not sure on how to do certain things like welt pockets or i've never done those before and i'd never done a color like this before so i looked up other tutorials on youtube and blogs on the internet um, and managed it that way and also looking at other coats and on the high street to see how it was constructed um so that wasn't too much of a problem. I added on top stitching in an attempt to make it seem less bulky, but it's not, didn't make any improvements whatsoever. And in fact, by that point, I was getting a bit annoyed with the whole thing and was starting to hate it. So the top stitching is pretty bad. Um, so that made no improvements. But I think this sort of drop shoulder, just nothing for me, my, on a, in the future I'm just gonna find a pattern that you know the shoulder finishes on the shoulder because it just it just makes me look massive like the width of it is just crazy um, and I did in fact take it in as well I did the smallest size and I took off about two inches from each side and it's still absolutely huge Um I didn't bother putting on the clothes fastening. I was just going to do a massive popper breast rod, um, but I didn't bother in the end because by that point I knew I was never going to be wearing it. Um, and I've not really finished the bottom bit either. So, but there's no point because it's going to get turned into something else one day. But I wanted to show you because, you know, one of the biggest problems with sewing is that the it it's no, it might not turn out how you anticipate so this is one of those occasions <laughs> but it, it's, it's at least made me realize I can do a coat so I just need to find the perfect pattern for me um, and that's everything from December so um, that all so if you liked what you saw give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll be back soon with more vlogs of what I've made and other crafty goodness. So bye!